fat ala fa tu ile pa ia male mamalu au fiel ne yasu ma lo le langi mama fa fteli ala fa le atu o ma fei ona ta tu fa tasi ile ne yasu o le yasu ile ne o fei le atu ma tauti oli oli ma fe fear ye this is the day that the lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it warm greetings to you all ta aloha ni o te vaiaho o te ngana o toke lau Greetings as we observe and celebrate the language uh, Tokelo Language Week, and thank you for joining the family of Saint Columba as we worship together and connect together on our online service this week. We hope that wherever you are, around Aotearoa and around the world, that you're keeping well, and uh, please know that you are in our thoughts and that our prayers are with you. Let us pray. Ko aho taki tahi te aliki e tolo aku aku hana ke kite manino koe ke alofa lahi pe akia te koe ke to muli muli atili lava kia te koe i aho day by day dear Lord these three things we ask to see you more clearly to love you more dearly to follow you more nearly day by day. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, chapter 10, verses 35 to 45. Praise and glory to God. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptised with the baptism that I am baptised with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptised, you will be baptised. But to sit at my right hand, or at my left, is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they rec recognise as their rulers, lord it over them. And their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you, must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave to all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of Christ, and praise to Christ the Word. In our mana, in our reo, in our hoe fa tena koto katoa. Well, greetings to you all in ministry units in different parts of the diocese, as most of us continue to gather in virtual ways for corporate worship. I'm glad to join you to offer this sermon today, conscious of the long haul that the lockdown is creating for us. Thank you for persevering and for continuing to support one another in all sorts of ways, including by being together in worship. Our readings for the Eucharist on Sunday mornings during this time include passages from Hebrews. And so if we were reading all of those, uh, I'm mindful of a verse that comes in chapter 10 of Hebrews that says that in the face of hardship, we must not neglect from meeting together or from encouraging one another. 
I want to extend special thanks to clergy and leaders in our worshipping communities, uh, people who are working very, very hard to make all of that possible, worship and encouragement, gathering together. Uh, please encourage them and support them uh, with your presence and the efforts that they're making that we might continue to glorify God in our lives. Vaccination is the issue on everyone's lips at the moment. And as I write this sermon, the country is preparing for a, a super Saturday of vaccinations, even holding a vaxathon to go alongside it. A bit of a throwback to my childhood, I confess. Recording ahead means that, unlike most uh, normal preaching, I won't be able to see how that's gone and to be able to offer any comment on it for Sunday morning. There's no question that the vaccination programme is now the major strategy for moving our nation to a point where we can adjust to living with COVID-19. It's going to be part of our ongoing reality. At the moment, for Aucklanders especially, there is a big incentive to cooperate with that because it gives us some hope of light ahead that our lives can regain a bit of normality and that people can go back to work, can go back on full pay, can ensure that the businesses that employ people are still there for us to return to. And none of that's as simple as it sounds, because across the country, we've got vaccination averse and uh, vaccination hesitant people. We have people who, for a variety of reasons, are struggling to access vaccination, or who have a suspicion of it, uh, a sense of exclusion from the programme. The best advice we're being given, I think, to help to reach this final group is to work personally with them. It's a little bit like the best approach to sharing our faith. It's not to stand on a platform and preach to the masses and tell them what to do, nor is it to constantly convey messages that simply scare people. Rather, it's best to sit down quietly with another, explain why this is important to me, answer the questions that the other may have, and do so in a spirit of trust and care. Times like this do tend to bring out both the best and the worst in people. The journey Jesus made to Jerusalem with the disciples in the final weeks of his life certainly did that. There's a whole series of moments where disciples don't quite get what Jesus is trying to tell them. But they realise it's a critical time. And the stress of it means that they don't always do the right thing. We read today of that request of James and John, the other disciples' response to it, and Jesus' advice to them about a different way to approach it all. James and John wanted places of honour and importance alongside Jesus, and the other disciples became jealous and angry as a result. This in spite of the fact that Jesus has been telling them things like the first being last, like uh, those who act with the trust of small children being the ones who are the greatest. And of course, speaking of his own willingness to die for the good of others, for the salvation of the world. Jostling for position, jealousy, anger, misunderstanding, they are all things we have to strive to overcome as we build community life. It can be very hard to perceive when those things are present, when the stakes are high, when people are convinced by their own position and driven by the outcomes that they are seeking from their own sense that this is critical. And sometimes the line's very easy to cross into that arena and so become the rulers who lord it over others, uh, the great ones who are tyrants over them. Well, and before people begin to speculate, uh, I'm not making a comment here on the government or on any person 
leading in COVID response. I uh, wouldn't want their job for all the communion wafers in Christendom, I have to say. So it's not about judging others, but about looking at ourselves and where our responsibility rests in being part of a community response to this or to any other challenge that we face together. So yes, I have been vaccinated, and I did so for a number of reasons. Uh, to be honest, some of them are about self-interest. They're about my own health and well-being if I did contract the virus. They're about my future opportunity to be part of things that go on in the community and not be excluded from them. But I also did it because I believe that it is for a wider community good, that that is served by being part of the percentage that we need to reach to protect the community as a whole. For me, that's about a community ethic of which I believe Jesus speaks when he tells of the great being servants and the first being a slave to all. And when he speaks about his own destiny being one of life-giving service for others. Jesus gives his life for the salvation of us all, and so sets a path for the kind of spirituality that should mark out the life of the Christian church and each person in it. So whether it be vaccinations or the number of refugees we welcome here, or ensuring that the homeless have a safe and warm place to sleep, or protecting our planet for the sake of the generations who will come after us. As followers of Jesus Christ, the one who came not to be served, but to serve, we are people who have a commitment to seek the good of others, the common good of the community as a whole. This approach by James and John shows us that a desire to seek whatever we want and what we think is good for us is the wrong starting place. The references Jesus makes to cup and baptism were probably about the suffering that lay ahead of him. For us, they can also be about the sacraments by which we are united with Christ and are sustained in our life in Christ we do well to ponder what it means to be in Christ, what it means to stand with Christ in the midst of the suffering and the need of others, and therefore what it means to act for their good before our own. I imagine those disciples were afraid of a future, a future Jesus was speaking of in which they really couldn't understand. Fear of the unknown can drive us to self-interest, to jealousy, to anger, to misunderstanding. Let us not be afraid. Let us seek to allay the fears of those who are. We carry the peace and the hope of Christ within us. The gifts of God to us and the gifts of God to others through us. Let us then, those who are in Christ, stand with Christ alongside others and together build a healthy community, a hopeful future and find our way together.
pilgrims on a journey. We are travelers on the road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load. Christ light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you, speak the peace you long to hear. Holy Father, your hope arises with each new dawn, pushing back the rubble of our lives. Each new day reminds us of your grace. You paint hope across our skies. Into the deafening cry of hopelessness, you whisper love. Love that catches us, holds us. There is no end, just new beginnings. No finish just new starts. Into your resurrection we follow you to bathe in hope. You are alive, not only in the world but in us, and so we carry your hope within our souls. Help us to lift our eyes and feel resurrection hope arise in our lives. God of love, grant, grant our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, be beside us. All, every day, guiding and leading us gently always. Lord, be above us. Help us to see the hope of the future, of all we could be. Lord, be beneath us. Carry us when we're too shattered or tired to really have strength. Lord, be ahead of us, smoothing our paths, protecting and blessing the places we pass. Lord, be behind us, healing our wounds, forgiving our mistakes and making us new. Jesus, be within us. Our families are yours now and forever. You are our Lord. God of love, grant, grant our, our prayer. prayer. Dear Father God, it saddens our hearts to see the great suffering of your beloved children in the world. We bring to mind all those in our locality who find themselves in a hard place. We especially pray for those who suffer physically with illness or mentally with depression or anxiety. Lord, come breathe on these people by your Holy Spirit and bring great love, hope and joy through us, your church. Help us to minister to others in the strength of your Spirit and to work in unity together. May we shine your glorious light into the darkness and remain steadfast and true to you. God of love, grant, grant our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, it disturbs us when we see world leaders embracing division instead of unity, pursuing wealth instead of justice, and concealing lies instead of speaking out the truth. We lift all those in significant leadership to you. Come guide their thoughts, cover their actions and renew their minds. Protect them from the influence of the realms of darkness and sweep away any corruption. We pray 
that you would lay out new paths of righteousness in troubled nations and lands. Father, it is disturbing to see the difference between rich and poor widening. We lift all those in poverty to you. Come, bring miracles of provision, healing and restoration. Speak into our lives so that we might play our part in changing the world. God of love, grant, grant our, our prayer. prayer. Talot, e katoa, mau whawhita e he aho whakoloa, mau au sia e honga flu i mahina, pia mau waka waka i e whunonga anga, mohono whaingataa. Mau whawhita e i honga tauhi of, o taula mahawa e ahafiuna, Mau lawe monu wai i he ofa whai i tāniti a awhio nā he whai a me i tāniti ki i tāniti. Ko a ofa u tolo ngā pia u tāngata a ofa u mai a awhio nā o kui a iaha taimia te ke whō pe te ke tawhōke ai me te ke mau tōlu e koe ofa ia a fiona u kai fru in femari uri waki. Hanga e pega folo fola o e aho koeni, nga ke hifo ki maamani, ke ke hoko o koha seba niti. Koeni a ho mau whaka hino hino, ke hoko e ko taasi i pinga ke mau mo ui, ke mau hoko ko toa pe, ko ha kau seba niti lele i he mo ui koeni. Whai tāpu e kina mea ki mau tōlu honu ko tōa e whaka aonga e wholofora ko tōu mo ki mau tōlu. Aonga ia ki whānau o Saint Columba o ki nau tōlu ko tōa o ki waot ki ai e mau lotuni. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.